Hello and welcome back to the second video on Big Data Analytics. In this video, we'll cover basics and parallel processing. So um, the basics we will start with. Some concepts and terms you should be familiar with are as follows. First of which is a computer cluster. A computer cluster is a collection of resources of multiple machines that work together. Parallel computing is the simultaneous process execution. Batch processing is breaking a task into subtasks and running them on individual machines. Real-time processing is the immediate processing of data. Some of the concepts of big data have been around for quite some time. Uh, in fact, uh, batch processing is nothing new. Um, but I would disagree with Grumpy Cat here. I don't believe it's a fad. I think, think it's here to stay. Um, so how do we process big data? Well, you can do it in one of two ways. You can actually do what's called vertical scaling. Vertical scaling is uh, having a powerful computer. So you see uh, the picture of the memory and the processor there. So um, we, can have, uh, we can have a powerful processor and lots of memory, and that would be referred to as vertical scaling. So another option we could have is we could scale out horizontally. Uh, so scaling out horizontally would mean that we have many computers and they would run in parallel and uh, we would have to apply batch processing and parallel processing in order to take advantage of horizontal scaling. So it's not always so important to have the best machine, uh, it's especially if you have many, many machines. Okay, so uh, now we're going to go into parallel processes a little more detail. So I'll first uh, cover what is non-parallel processing. So for non-parallel processing, we have a problem and we have a series of different uh, tasks that need to be performed. Okay, so you see uh, T1 through Tn. Um, and each task goes into the processor and they need to be processed in order because the processor can only handle one task at a time. Okay. So think about how a single processor might handle doing the payroll. Okay, so we have multiple employees here. Um, so what we would have to do is task one is we'd have to enter in the employee one's hours, then employees one, employee one's rate, and then employee one's deductions and so on. And then once we get all of employee one's information and then we move on to employee two and employee three, etc. Okay. And uh, each of these tasks are performed one at a time. Now consider the task of parallel processing, whereby which we have a problem and uh, we break the problem up into a series of tasks and uh, each task is sent into a processor okay so um, so here um, the processor one or the the top processor handles uh, the first portion of the problem and uh, those instructions are slowly broken down into those subtasks and then processor two um, does another series of subtasks and so on. Consider the payroll example where um, we're trying to do the payroll for all employees. It would actually be very beneficial if we had one single processor to process each employee's payroll. So if that were the case, then um, we send um, all the instructions involving employee one to the first processor. 
and then we send all of the instructions um, for employee two to the second processor and so on. Okay, and then uh, the advantage to this, of course, is that um, these payrolls can be processed at the same time. Now consider the double for loop in which we are trying to calculate the function for each value of i and j, and returning the ijth component of a. Can I run this code in parallel? So this is, of course, a trick question. It depends upon the function. It, in particular, it depends on if um, the ijth component of A corresponds to previous versions of AIJ. Because if it is, then we won't have that information to calculate it in parallel. To use parallel processing, we may want to consider using the split apply combine algorithm, which is very simple. Um, we are simply splitting the data, applying some function, and then combining the results back together. However, as mentioned previously, a number of parallelization problems could occur. Okay. How do we assign work units to workers? Okay. What if we have more work units than workers? What if workers need to share partial results? How do we aggregate partial results? How do we know all the workers have finished? And what if workers are unable to complete the task? That is, they die. So all of these problems could potentially happen. Um, and here are some possible causes, uh, communication between workers um, that, could, uh, that could cause the problem. Uh, also, if uh, they're trying to access the same resource, that is the same data set, um, and they try to access it at the same time, there could potentially be uh, an issue there. Um, so in addition to everything I just spoke about, we would need a synchronization mechanism to make sure that uh, there aren't any parallelization problems. So uh, I will see you in the next video.